Well, Chris, congratulations. Very nice to see you for the first time. Yeah. I suppose the first question is, why Yeovil Town? Oh, what, what, what? It's a fantastic club. Um, you know, every time I've I've been here as a as a player, um, every time I've been in and around the the ground, I've I've loved it. Great atmosphere, great fan base, um, huge club. So um, really excited. And you have such links to the West Country, of yeah. course. You must have always known the ups and downs that have been the last 10 years of Yeovil Town. Yeah, of course. Um, as with lots of football clubs, um, you know, I know a lot of the, the coaches and managers and players that have been at the club, um, but they speak so highly of it. And being in the South West, yeah, I have. I've, 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 I've seen them in many leagues. Um, and with my current role, um, both with Bristol Rovers recently and, and BT Sport, I've seen a lot more of them. Um, but yeah, really excited. Um, as I say, really good fan base, uh, huge football club. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting started. In terms of the, the process of you being appointed, mm. what really drew you to, to, to the, the vacancy that came up? The size of the club, um, the potential of the club, the um, the belief that we can do something, um, and you know I've seen that that unity from the the fans because there has been turmoil. Um, obviously, with Lee um, in recent times, which galvanised that 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 player fan connection, um, and it was you know it was fantastic to see, and you can see that 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 support is is loyal. Um, you know, I've spoken to a lot of people about the club, you know, ex-players, coaches, and managers, as I say, and that that um, that togetherness is is vital if we're going to be successful. And you mentioned it there, the turmoil. There's been quite a lot of uncertainty mm. off the pitch, particularly the last few games. I assume you've had a lot of conversations with the chairman, given assurances that you can have a positive season and be backed. Yeah, that's 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 all I want to concentrate on the football side of things. Um, getting a good group of players together. Um, adding to what we've got um, and and trying to be super competitive. So that's that's the plan. You know, anyone that that we sign has got to desperately want to play for the football club um, and and show that honesty and and will to be better. So that's that's my job to to, to look for those types of characters that that want to come here and want to play for the club. In terms of the players that are already here, yeah. you've met them. Have you had a chance to have a look at them, perhaps when you were working for BT Sport? Yeah, you know, I've, I've either in person or um, on the laptop watched the last 10, 12 games. So I've got a fair idea. I've met all of the boys, either individually for a chat or, in, or on the phone. Um, and they're a fantastic group of lads. You know, I know people say that about every group of players, but they are. Um, and I hope we can we can work together in the future and, and, and improve some of the younger players uh, because that's what my background's been uh, in player development. So looking forward to the start of the season, looking forward to getting the, the group of players together that, that we all want. And as you say, you were an academy manager last time out at, yeah. at Bristol Rovers. Is that something you're going to really focus on? You've already got a young group potentially signing on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Obviously, been in three roles at Rovers, so I've seen all the types. You know, with the twenty threes, assistant manager, um, and the academy manager, as you say, and that's that's got to be the plan at clubs across the country to to be more sustainable, hasn't it? To to, to try and bring our own players through or improve players that we get in, um, either to be successful for us or, or or be more financially viable. So. Player development's a big thing, uh, something that I enjoy, uh, but at the end of the day, um, they've got to be the right character coming through. Yeah, of course, and as you say, know that it's a tough league, the yeah, National League. It's it is. so much money in it now, isn't there? It's it's all about just make, getting the best out of those players. Yeah, there's this massive expectation uh, at, at some of the clubs in the league um, because of the budgets they've got, for sure. And we've seen that, haven't we, this, this season with with clubs, you know, buying players for three hundred thousand and and the wages that are rumoured, but again, I can't affect any of that. All I can affect is is this group of players um, and and get that togetherness and spirit because one thing's for sure, we need the support, we need the fans, 
I want the players to give it everything so that there's that connection that continues um, and we'll, we'll just worry about our club. And you must have seen the togetherness on Saturday. 26-year-old yeah. was in, in charge of the club. It's something special at Yeovil, isn't it? It is, yeah. And I've spoken to Josh um, before and after. And um, that that's a true sign of, of the professionalism and, um, and what the club means. Because, obviously, you don't have to do that, do you? Uh, but he stepped up and did it and did a good job. Uh, one in one, not bad, is it? So, um, you know, there's some really, really good people here. You can see at the football club that that people work the socks off, no doubt about it. And 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 I've seen that at many of the football clubs that I've been at, where it's unsung heroes in the staff, uh, in the support staff, um, and that's valued by me. And it's got to be valued by, as I say, anyone who comes through the door or or the players remaining here, um, so that when we all turn up on a Saturday we're all as one uh, and the fans can buy into the players obviously the players have got to do the business for them because then the fans will get back behind them even more but primarily I want to see that that faithful come into the to come into the ground and being proud of the team and this is the first time in seven years that you're first team manager yeah. how are you excited are you to be the main man very of course uh, very proud um, very proud to be here uh, to be such a huge club and um, know that I've got a responsibility to to give those players that those messages of honesty integrity trying to improve um, and I hope I'll have a connection myself uh, I'm going to try and do my best to make sure that all of us uh, have got that mutual respect in and around the club so really excited looking forward to getting started on the grass and of course, you can't do it all on your own. I assume no. you're going to bring in you know, your own coach, assistant manager. Will yeah. we hear about that soon? Yes, absolutely. Um, obviously, no decisions made as yet, but ongoing talks um, uh, as well as players. You know, this is a time I've just come in the building, so there's discussions to be had. Um, and as soon as I can give you any information, I will. And how important is it for you to have that full pre-season, getting mm. the contract sorted, your two-year contract, yeah. and then having the full pre-season to oh, get ready really for good. the season? Yeah, absolutely. It's really good. It, it, it goes quickly, for sure. Um, and it goes quickly for the players, because the players all want to go off, don't they, and have a break <laughs> and, and, and relax, deservedly so, after a hard season. But then the hard work starts for... for during the pre-season for, for myself and the staff to make sure that we're all ready um, and you know I spoke to many managers in this league already several this morning um, everyone's in the same boat you know looking for good players um, trying to do your homework and trying to keep your, your, your best players at the football club so it's going to be a busy summer but it's a fantastic challenge, looking forward to it. You'll certainly have a, a full contact book, I'm sure. Will you be looking to utilise the loan market as well? I think you've got to. You've got to. Any, any manager would tell you the same and uh, any club. Um, again, the right type of player and the, the, the right type of player for him. You know, he's got to want to improve and develop. And we've got to have a relationship with a, with a club that's given us that player. Um, so, again, it's, it's homework. It's, it's making sure you do your due diligence to get the right character in um, because that loan can be as you rightly say hugely important for, for the club and what can you all town fans expect in terms of your style of play well I hope they'll see a, a, an honesty a, a hard working group uh, and, and an attacking side um, that's what we'll try and be as, as you've previously said it's a very competitive league um, but one that the players have got to really look forward to. It's it's a fantastic platform to go and play your football. And it's probably at its height now, it's probably the most competitive it's ever been. So it's even more of a challenge, but the size of this club and the, the fan base is, is something that I'm going to draw on. And I'm guessing from what you've been saying, you'll be wanting to, to push to get you all back in the Football League. Well, that's the plan. You know the, the, the club needs to be in the football league. Of course, it does. Um, I've been in the game a long time, so um, I'm not going to be throwing predictions out. But all I can say is that I'm going to try and get a very hard-working group of honest lads together, and ones that care about the football club and want to do well and want to develop. Um, and that's that's my job now. 
Well, good luck and thank, thank you, you so much. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> um, yeah, am I able to do a one to one in the stand afterwards? Yeah, yeah no, I'll, I'll do that. If that's okay. No worries. Yeah. Chris, yeah. you've got a difficult task coming in. You've got to get players in. Yeah. You've also got to train the team. Yes. You've got to, get your style of playing yeah. how difficult is that going to be do you think um, well I'm looking forward to it it's um, it's the same as any manager I've, you know I've uh, I've got to get the players together first and I haven't worked with them um, so I've got to keep the players together at the football club that, that want to stay um, and add to it and, and then we work hard on on our shape um, our patterns of play um, and our general ethos of a football club um, why the players want to be here and, and I hope they want to be here be because they want to get better and improve uh, because it's a big part of my my career has been youth development so big challenge but it's it's one that I'm really looking forward to and I, as I say I'm really proud to be here money is obviously going to play a huge part from mm. the budget point of view yeah um, do you think your style of play is going to attract the fans back to Hewish Park because you need to get the, the crowds up for sort of, to get your budgets better presumably yeah that that's the aim of course it is um, that's the aim of any manager um, but the the football club's a big club in this league in my opinion and I think that the size of the club can attract players and I know we all talk about budgets and there are some huge budgets in the league and I know I, I get that you, you've got to overachieve. Of course, you have. Um, I'll be drawing on the fact that we can talk about the the history of the club, the size of the club, um, to to attract players. Um, and as I say, you've got to look into their eyes and and, and make sure they want to be here. Um, so that's that's my job over the next six eight weeks before we turn up for pre-season training. Um, as well as talking to the boys and, and, and knowing about the ones that, that, that want to remain. Obviously, some lads are under contract that are staying. Um, there's plenty out of contract, and it's up to us to have an honest conversation about uh, about their plans and my plans going forward. I mean, you know, the whole club has experienced the highs and the lows. I mean, they had the highs of going into the championship. Yeah. And, and certainly, you know, Yeovil thrives on that sort of success. Yeah. Do you, do you feel you've got a fair chance of getting back to the sort of level? <coughs> Every, every manager will say the same, and, and I'm no different. I want to be competitive. Um, I want that for the football club, um, and we're going to try our best to recruit the types of players that can do that. Now, I've spoken to Gary and Skivo and Darren uh, and Daz. You know, they know the size of the club, and they know the size of the task, uh, but the club have done it before um, on limited budget. And as I say, I know a lot of those former players and they talk about those times and you see, you know, rolling up to the stadium, you can see it on the side of the stand. Mm. Um, so we're trying to be successful. That's what we want to be, for sure. Um, and the sooner I can get started, the better. How would you describe your preferred style? Resilient, hard to beat. You have to be, you have to be in this league, no doubt about it. Um, you know, there's some serious firepower. There's some, there's some huge clubs and, and, and huge budgets. Um, so we have to have a building block of that. Um, but as I say, um, I want us to be in the attacking side. I want us to try and believe we can win games. And so people that come through the door have got to be the same. Well, I wish you all the best. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Uh, we'll go on to Zoom now. Yeah. Hi, Chris. Hello. Hello there, David here from the Bluffs. Hi, David. Yeah, nice you okay? Yes, I'm very well, thank you. Firstly, welcome to the Oval Town. Thanks a lot. Good to, good to have you here. Um, yeah, I just wondered if I could start by asking, you've mentioned a lot uh, about ambition in this division from your BT Sport role, obviously. Where do you think the Oval Town's ambition ranks against some of the other clubs that you've been watching over this season? Well, it, we, we want to be competitive, don't we? You know, again... I, any manager starting off in this role or any manager starting off uh, at any other football club, club in this league want to be competitive. And what we think we can do within the squad remains within the squad. Um, because offering predictions, I won't be doing. But what I will be doing is saying that everything in my powers I will do to make us um, a successful team and, and get the right type of people in for the football club. And I, 
you know, I hope that players that, that stay here want to try and get better because it's a, a very short career. So um, that's something that I'll be telling the players, um, any players that, that come in, young or old, you know, you've got to make the most of that time you have as a, as a professional footballer. You, you've spoken there about how you've had a lot of conversations with players um, already since you, you've been at the club. How have those conversations been? Have you got any um, positives of players that you know are leaving or players that you know are signing on new contracts? Is there anything definitive at the moment? No, not at the moment, but um, I have had some good conversations. Fantastic group of lads uh, and, a, and a lot of honest conversations from, from both sides, which is what I want. Um, we want players that, that, that want to play for the club and want to stay. Um, inevitably, there, there'll be a turnaround of players, as there is at most clubs. Um, and any player that's, that's been here and, and goes on, we wish them all the best and thank them for the help. Um, and, and in some instances, we can't do anything about that. Um, but as I say, I can only deal with what I can deal with at the moment, which is having further conversations with the players um, and then making some decisions over the course of the next few days. Okay, and uh, it's obviously been mentioned, and I'm, I'm not sure if you mind me mentioning it again, but seven years since you've been out of the first team, Rob, what was it that made you want to get back into first team football at all? I mean, travelling around the country watching football must be quite a nice job, I'd have thought. Why didn't, why didn't <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought that had come up at some point. No, you know, I've, I've always been in the game. I've always been in the game in whatever co capacity you know, BT Sport, a fantastic team of people, and I've enjoyed it because I've enjoyed it because, like all of us, we love watching football. Um, but my, you know, my primary job, my my focus, my love is 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 being, you know, in a dugout, being on the grass, being with the players. Um, I've been able to see a lot of the teams in the league, and 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 I've, as I say, I've worked with a really good group of people. Um, but in that time, in in the time that. Um, I've been a manager. I've obviously been an assistant in a league, a league one club, um, in a very, you know, demanding environment, um, as well as been an academy manager and, and and coaching for the whole of that time. So, you know, I I've seen a lot of football and I've been in a lot of different capacities. Um, but the size of the club and the draw and the chats I've had with Scott um, meant that you know this was a job that I, I couldn't turn down. Okay. And you, you mentioned the chairman there. I mean, it'll be no surprise to you that there's been uh, a lot going on off the pitch at the moment, talk of potential takeovers and, and so forth. The chairman recently spoke about the fact that he may not be chairman again in the future, possibly, maybe, maybe not. What assurances has he given you with regards to the off-the-field situation? I know you'll want to focus on the on-the-field, mm. but has he given you those assurances that there is the stability that you'll need to build the team you want to build? Yeah, I mean, you, you've said it. My my focus is the squad, the team, the players. That's what I can affect. Um, you know, the discussions I've had with Scott, uh, you know, is trying to form a new board um, and, and it is in the process of doing that. Um, and, that, you know, that that's, that's Scott. And, and those uh, members to do that. My job is the football. Uh, my job is getting on the grass and being with the players. Um, and that's my focus, that's my sole focus. Okay, but you're comfortable, you understand the off the field situation to allow you to have Absolutely, that absolutely. Okay, okay, great. Um, it's just one final question for me. Obviously you've come from an academy background. You'll be familiar with what the setup is at Yeovil. There, there is no academy. You, you spoke in your earlier interview on the club YouTube about having that pathway to bring players through. Uh, it's not going to, Rome wasn't built in a day, was it? But what would you like to do? What would you like to see happening in that, that youth set up at Yeovil Town to, to achieve those aims? Yeah, I've got a few ideas. Um, and again, I've got, there's a few conversations to be had regarding that. Uh, and it is, it is very difficult. And I've got a massive sympathy for any club that goes through that, that, that obviously lose that, that, that funding. But there's ways we can get round it. Um, as I say, I've got a few discussions to have um, over the course of the next couple of weeks. And uh, over and above what we have of our own boys coming through, and, and we will find you know, the gems, no doubt about it. Any younger players that come through, we have to use the development they've had from a number of other clubs um, to our advantage. You know, we're not the only club that will be doing that. There's, there's, 
every club in this league will be looking for, for younger players coming out of academies. Um, so it's a bit of both, really. Um, but one thing's for sure, there's, you know, I understand that there's no better um, feeling as a, as a fan knowing you've got one of your own. So, you know, fingers crossed we can, we can try and do that. It is a, a difficult task because it's, it's a tough being a pro footballer. But we've got to give it a, a, an attempt to do that. And uh, as I say, the integration into that first team squad to try and get to enter, accelerate that that sort of understanding of what it is to be a, a, a pro footballer um, will happen hopefully in the next uh, in the next season. Fantastic. Well, thanks, Chris, and welcome again. Thank you very uh, much. The very best of luck. Cheers. Thanks a lot.